Even with the appointment of a special counsel, if you thought the White House was moving past its Russia problem, definitely think twice. Time Magazine. Do you want to see a summarization here of just how bad it is? The Trump-Russia relationship is its cover shot here, showing the White House and the Kremlin combining together under Trump's watch. But there's more, much more. Um, and they just cover art here. The drip, drip, drip of Trump's Russia stories just keep on coming, and none of the headlines read like good news for this White House. Andrew? Rich, we got a couple of new headlines and just a really embarrassing story from Capitol Hill to share. First up, word of more contacts between the Trump campaign and Russia. Reuters reporting today it has confirmed at least 18 contacts between the campaign and either Russian officials or Russians with ties to the Kremlin, and all of that during the last seven months of the campaign. Michael Flynn accounting for some of those contacts, but not all of them. And the Wall Street Journal reporting that a Russian state-run bank pumped cash, at least $15 million, into the construction of a Trump hotel in Toronto. The money was reportedly funneled through a couple of other entities to provide some distance between the bank, of which Vladimir Putin sits on a supervisory board, and the Trump Hotel project. That bank has been under U.S. sanctions since 2014 after the hotel opened, though its executives met with Jared Kushner during the campaign despite those sanctions from the United States. Trump, along with Ivanka, Don Jr., and Eric Trump, all attended the hotel's opening in 2012. And yet Trump has time and time again maintained that he has no contact with Russia and receives no Russian money. Trump directed his attorneys to release a certified letter last week saying as much. And then, of course, there are the Trump's own comments like these. You know the way every time Russia's brought up, they say, oh, Trump, what do I have to do with it? I have nothing to do with Russia, folks, okay? I'll give you a written statement, nothing to do. A written statement. And then there's that embarrassing story from The Hill that I mentioned before, and it's centered on Kevin McCarthy. He's the majority leader in the House and Paul Ryan's number two man. Last July, the day after reports came out that Russians had hacked the DNC, McCarthy, Ryan, and other GOP leaders were meeting and talking and doing what a lot of us do at the office, gossiping. And the gossip begins with McCarthy and Ryan talking about the hacking conversation that generated lots of laughter in the room, Ryan even asking who the Russians would deliver the hacked info to. But here's the key part in this next screen. McCarthy tells the room, quote, there's, there's two people I think Putin pays, California Republican Congressman Dana Rohrabacher and Trump. Laughter follows, after which McCarthy says, swear to God. At that point, Ryan appeals for the conversation to stay private, saying no leaks, and this is how we know we're a real family here. What's said in the family stays in the family. So, Rich, uh, McCarthy thinks that Trump is getting money from Putin. <laughs> Everybody has a good chuckle, and then Ryan's like, we're all one family, well, let's keep this quiet. But it's worse than that. They deny the existence of the conversation. That's correct. And it, it never happened, never happened until someone had a tape. The specter of tapes and, and recordings it's is incredible. hanging over all of this stuff. Yeah. How, wh what is there about history that you don't want to learn? Don't say hey. things that aren't true if you don't, if there's but a tape But you're focused on there. the wrong history. You're focused on White House history. Trump's personal business history says, I can do that no problem. And he's been doing that his entire career. He's apparently eavesdropped on phone calls at Trump Tower. He has a setup at Mar-a-Lago that lets him eavesdrop on people. So he's been doing this for but years. But let's not forget, he's the one who unsolicited introduced the idea exactly. of recordings in the White House. Right. He did it to himself. Like, all of these things are all self-inflicted. But I think we always miss the point. And I think Andrew did a great job. And by the way, that was just from today. <laughs> okay. That's today's news <coughs> about Russia. Yeah. Okay. It's Russia, Phil. Yeah. L let's keep saying that. It's Russia. <laughs> it's, it, it's not like, hey, we're doing it with England, but hey, you know, eh. it's Russia. They're not good guys, okay? Just ask our friends in the Ukraine about them. Just see what they've done in Syria. Just, I mean, I can go on and on. In Afghanistan, reportedly. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. Wait, I'll play the recording. Yeah, no, but... <laughs> Again, for me, I'm not expecting giant political courage. But Republicans at a certain point have to not just say, you know, this guy, you, I'll give you points for it, before even the election, and you've been a lifelong Republican and a proud one at it, you couldn't abide by him being at the top of the ticket for your party and, and went down the conservative line rather than that of being a Republican. At a certain point, it's bad policies to do what they're doing, and moreover, Not if you're it's facing just the distasteful. I guess you're all right here, but it's Russia. They are not the U.S. ally. 
They're an enemy um, in terms of a lot of our self-interest right now, and it's just something you want to take a bath about. Yeah. With everything lining up and all these little storylines like weaving together, I think there's a chance that Trump resigns quickly. And I think that's the best thing that could happen for Republicans, clearly. And the conservatives well, will get my well, there is one no history of that kind no, of No, there isn't, yeah. but we're in uncharted but, uh, territories. But, but uh, Andrew, to the point that Bill raises, which is a lot of Republicans, you, you say, hey, would you rather have Pence or Trump? I, I think the, the numbers the in the 90s, they'd love <laughs> Pence, especially if they didn't have to do it. But he could be having some of his own problems here, and this comes back to a certain Mr. Flynn. Yeah, we'll get to Pence in all this in a second, but lots of new stories about Michael Flynn and what he did while working for Trump. Indications the Trump team and the president should have known better, or at least made some really questionable decisions related to Flynn, and that Flynn's contacts with Trump amazingly are continuing even after he was forced to resign. McClatchy reporting that during the transition, as Trump's top foreign policy aide and likely national security advisor, Flynn scrapped a military campaign opposed by the government in Turkey while Flynn was on the Turkish payroll. Obama's security team asked Flynn his take on the plan, which would have boosted the role of Syrian Kurds in the fight against ISIS. The mission would have extended into the Trump administration, so when Flynn objected, the mission was scrapped. Turkey fears an empowered Kurdish population as a threat to its own security. This is Yahoo's Michael Isikoff reports that Trump and Flynn are probably still in contact. Flynn telling friends at a recent dinner he got a message from Trump to stay strong. It's not clear how that word got from Trump to Flynn. Flynn also told the group that he remains loyal to Trump. But the biggest bombshell may be that Trump's transition team knew that Flynn was lobbying for Turkey and that he was the subject of a federal investigation in January, weeks before Trump's inauguration, and that despite both the lobbying and the investigation, both of which would disqualify most would-be national security advisors, the Trump team supported Flynn and named him NSA chief anyhow. And this isn't just a problem for Trump, as Rich was mentioning, Flynn told the transition team about both problems, and the head of the transition team is a man named Mike Pence, who said this in an interview about Flynn after Flynn's resignation. Former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn has filed with the Department of Justice as a foreign agent. Your reaction to that, considering that, doesn't that mean, Mr. Vice President, that even if he didn't lie to you about what the Russian ambassador said or didn't say, that you would have had to fire him anyway? Let me say, hearing that story today was the first I heard of it. And um, I fully support the decision that President Trump made to ask for General Flynn's resignation. You're disappointed by the story? Uh, the first I heard of it. That was in March. You keep saying this is the first I've heard of it. But we now know that the transition team of which he led knew about Flynn's issues in January. So at least two months on, Pence is either lying about that or he's going to hide behind the cover that, well, it's the first I'm hearing of the reporting of it, which is, you know, not really a distinction worth mentioning. There may or may not be paper trails. Uh, there may or not be recordings. But at a certain point, very soon, as early as next week, you're going to have in direct juxtaposition Donald Trump and Comey. And people are going to have to decide who do you trust. If Comey produces notes, it's either he's lying and he made them up after the fact, or Trump's lying that, you know, he really did say those things to him uh, beyond his denials. The problem I see for Republicans is two things. One, what Richard said, you don't know the next shoe that's going to drop. And every day, right around 5 o'clock, a shoe drops. <laughs> and secondly, it's a clockwork. It's amazing. And then secondly, you don't know because everybody's been lying. You don't know who's telling you the truth. And right. you don't know who to believe. But I think most people believe Comey, even if you don't like what he did in the fall, more than they do Donald Trump, go, and that's the dilemma. Richard, go back to the uh, Mueller investigation. What do you think the first thing he's going to do is? He's going to say to the White House, tapes. do you have any tapes? Yeah. And if you do, do not destroy them. Now, if they're not already destroyed, which is, I think, 50-50, even then he's going to say, were there tapes and who destroyed them? Under whose authority? If, if it comes down to the existence of a taping system, and there was one, we don't have much to worry about because it's all going to come out right. and all of this who do you believe who do you don't believe who said what on who is going to vanish when people actually get to listen to those tapes. Richard would it be a crime for those tapes to be destroyed it would be right yeah, it depends at, at this point when. 74 that prevents the president right. or the executive that's, office that's from right. destroying if, that's right if for, they uh, were for a material investigation you can argue if you want to make this nuance yet. 
has the material investigation began or not relating to the tapes. But the, but the notion of tapes right now is still a theoretical one. Absolutely. The only word we but it was one introduced from, by the press. Right, it's the, that, yeah. but that's the only word. And who knows if he's telling the truth. Also, by the way, Comey, we think, actually wrote those memos. We, we've heard from people who have said they've seen them, but we don't have the proof on that yet. So assuming that, that neither one of those gets factored into play, it's still an interesting question as to who people would believe Comey versus Trump. I can't see how many people would take Trump's side on this if it's a question Especially of who you trust. What, what, yeah, what, 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 what I found very interesting yeah. to that question was that Congressman Lee Zeldin from the 1st District of Long Island, a good guy, I know him a little bit, he came out very, very early for Donald Trump, and I thought, wow, that's a risk. I mean, you know, it was really volatile in 16, but he went all in on it. He was asked yesterday whether he had reason to believe that Comey could be not telling the truth about the memo, and he said... I, I have no reason not to believe Mr. Comey. And yep. I thought, wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think Comey's a little beaten up because he's, he's had but, trouble uh, and judgment errors, yeah. but on the uh, honesty and, question. And when I went to break in the last segment, I tried to remind, we were talking about Russia, okay? <laughs> Russia. Remember, miracle on ice, the whole thing? That same guys, okay? <laughs> now I just want you to think, as we're talking about Flynn, he was told by the previous administration then he was told by the acting attorney general afterwards and warned about him. They not only hired him, they kept him on again to be the national security advisor. That's the guy who knows everything that's going on, access to every bit of confidential mm -hmm. information, all international and both national security threats, all of that. They still went ahead with that. This isn't about partisan politics, pot shots or whatever. Russia and National Security Advisor. Just remember those two words or phrases. All right, coming up next, Congressman from our area is joining us to talk about the latest regarding the Russia investigation. New York Democrat Sean Patrick Maloney tells us if he thinks Mueller is the right man for the job.